Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. This is a rare visit with uh, the Urutu or Half Moon Viper. Um, she came to me courtesy of from the Kentucky Reptile Zoo in 2016 along with her brother. They were just babies then. They were just newborns. And unfortunately, Delta tried to kill them by leaving them in the heat on the tarmac uh, during transfer. Uh, she survived, but has some neuro neuromuscular coordination issues. Uh, her brother uh, did not make it, uh, which makes me really sad. These are, these are very, very beautiful uh, vipers uh, from, from South America. Uh, Bothrops alternatus. Uh, there is one recorded uh, fatality from one of these in the United States. Um, young woman that I knew uh, was bitten by one and unfortunately she did not re receive proper care for the bite and ended up uh, dying of a cerebral hemorrhage because of the venoms uh, anticoagulation ability basically uh, they cause a consumptive coagulopathy and she had no re no way to clot and uh, the venom also causes leakage in capillaries and other vessels and uh, she died of a brain bleed less than 24 hours after the bite pretty sad state of affairs. Uh, the family sued, but the Supreme Court of that particular state or an appellate court threw the case out of court. Um, the doctors got off scot-free. Uh, the reason why they threw it out is uh, uh, they said that she shouldn't be keeping venomous snakes uh, anyway, essentially a very poor excuse, but unfortunately that's the truth of the entire ordeal. What are you up to? Mr. Brown uh, had his cage cleaned and uh, he's already messed it up. He says, you don't have any food for me, mm, so I'm going to go through my tunnel. Come on, Mr. Brown, get a drink. Oh, don't bite your tail. He has this habit of biting <laughs> anything that moves, including his body. I saw him yesterday when I was feeding him. He, he bit himself three times before he figured out where the mouse was. <laughs> it would be really interesting to, to throw a live mouse in there because would be uh, all over the place. He has probably broken every bone in his tail by slapping it around uh, uh, like that. This is a, a pygmy mulga snake from Papua New Guinea. Cousins to the King, uh, King Brown on the mainland of Australia, which gets to ginormous proportions. These guys uh, top out about you know, three feet and where the other guys get twice that big. These guys have a cocktail of venom. Uh, they've got pre and post synaptic neurotoxins and predominantly myotoxins, uh, which do evil things to your kidneys.
he can uh, detect uh, food in the room. That's why he's in hyperspace. Oh, come on. He doesn't need that excuse. Well, he just needs to see me, and he's, uh, he's raring to go. Easy, dude. <laughs> Did I scare you? Big bad Mr. Brown. Well, Mr. Popea put on quite the show earlier. Unfortunately, Lori didn't have the camera in the room with us uh, at the time. Uh, I opened the cage. He struck, he fell, and he felt very embarrassed and uh, uh, decided that he would get really upset and started tail wagging and tail slapping. Uh, but you know, he took the morsel anyway. Wasn't that embarrassed? Would you like another one, huh? Well, what was that? That was defensive, huh? Are you still angry? Are you still embarrassed? Huh? All right, good opportunity. He's fighting his head in shame. <laughs> you are a silly, silly animal. All right, these are the baby coral cobras. Hello, are you going into shed? Huh? Oh, we're getting huffy. We're getting huffy. Would you like this, huh? Are we going into shed or are we already through shed, huh? My. Oh, it's like I can hear it huffing and puffing even. You can see sort of milky. All right, well, if you don't want it, you don't have to have it. Or are you just too stupid to figure out that I got <laughs> food here? Well, you tried to bite it. Was that a defensive bite? Or was that like, I want, I want it, but it moved out of the way? No, we're all defensive. All right, I'm going to leave that there for now. If he's in shed, I'm going to come back and pour some water in there for him. <clears throat> you just never know. Alright, so this is the female. Oops. When that happens. You know, with these uh, surgical tongues, it's easy to explode your, uh, your feeding item if you squeeze them too hard. Hello? Somebody home? Please say there's somebody home. Yep, I see movement. <laughs> Hello? Oh, yeah, she's. <laughs> the female is no fuss, no muss. Uh, Give me the food. Yep, just like her mom. <laughs> She's a bit wacky. Yes, the mom just, there's another one that would eat until she explodes. Yep, yep. We see some guts spilling there. And like I said, that's, you know, you heat them up, their skin, the skin of the rodent becomes a bit fragile and these forceps are a bit much for it, but. Uh, Doesn't seem to be bothering her. Uh, no, no, she's actually working it from the back end. Uh, so she's going to have to bend that leg around in order to uh, to get it down. But um, knowing her, she will uh, figure it out. So we'll come back. We're going to change water dishes. Oh, you're interested, obviously. This is one of the baby. They're no longer babies. They're adult Egyptian saw scales. That in there. You don't like the camera. I see that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, none of the saw scales like the camera at all. Some snakes don't care. They really do. You know, these were, were hatched in 2017 and are adults. And at this size, they're absolutely lethal.
Hello. Would you like that? Oh, no question about that. We already, <laughs> we're just uh, done there. Okay, so these are the two ringed water culverts. We're not messing with those. Um, I'll offer the Echis oscillatus. It's breeding season. The female may eat. The male has, oh, hello. The female will eat, okay. <laughs> I did throw the male in with the female for a week or so. Uh, so maybe uh, he has gotten that out of his system and she could be uh, uh, gravid. But, you know, he's, uh, he's very shy and he hasn't been eating. I may have to re resort to giving him some... Uh, a live mouse just to get him back on track. You know, I forgot the I forgot to check uh, and annotate her file that she ate two hoppers last night, and she obviously wants another. Come on, don't be picky. What is it? Not hot enough, huh? They get very picky if they're not. Yeah, this isn't. This is clearly not hot enough. They only react to really hot ones. All right, I gotta add some boiling water to this watcher. <laughs> Maury, are you insulted? Was that just not to your liking? I mean, it doesn't matter how hungry they are, they can be very picky. Are you going to act all butthurt now and not eat? No, you're not, you're not quite into it, huh? Come on. You ate last night, your eyes are bigger than your belly? Oh, no, no. <laughs> you decided I, you weren't, you weren't going to pass that up. If you insist. We'll let her uh, dine, and we'll see if the, the newest mother in the very polite and kind sense, <laughs> um, <laughs> is ready to eat yet. And the green rocket was off feed for a long time and we couldn't figure out why. And, uh, hey! Oh, yeah. She was off feed since December. It was because she went parthenogenic on us and, and dropped a bunch of her own babies. Uh, so it's very nice to see her, uh, uh, back on feed because she would feed, it was like clockwork. I mean, you know, a day without her feeding is like a day without sunshine. It's just... Yeah, it's just, so she hadn't been with a male. We were worried that something was wrong with her. We never thought, you know, she was gravid. Yeah. You know, last year she threw slugs. So this is normal if a, ma if a female wasn't with a... Uh, a male, but this time around she gave birth to a, a whole bunch of deformed babies which we're trying to, there's four of them left, we're trying to save those even though they're sort of in rough shape. So we'll let, we'll let her digestive system get started with a light meal, that's all that she's going to get today and, and we'll sort of power feed her for a while and you know we weren't trying to breed things during the pandemic. Uh, so that's why we never put a male in there, but both these males here, this guy here and this guy over there, are un unrelated offspring to her. So um, one of these guys is going to get lucky, um, but we want to make sure that she's got a lot of food in her gut so she doesn't <laughs> eat the male. <laughs> so she'll get fed, but a little bit uh, later on, uh, uh, she'll get the male put in with her probably uh, in September. This is one of my big female insularis. 
Surprisingly, she hasn't thrown slugs or babies or anything like that. Uh, she's definitely uh, a female. Um, I will. Uh, I'll put one of the males in with her and see if we can get some uh, some babies. But I really want to get some viable uh, green ones out of the green rocket. Uh, there's four or five that are still alive and sort of hanging in there, but they have so many defects from being a clone of their mother uh, and being born from parthenogenesis that, uh, you know, if they survive to adulthood, uh, that would be, you know, it's going to take a lot of work. Uh, um, but on top of that, they, um, they may not be able to reproduce and uh, it would not be you know proper thing to do uh, to reproduce those so I'm gonna put uh, uh, put Miss Green the Green Rocket with a uh, uh, with a male so maybe we produce some viable babies uh, not that we don't have enough of them already <laughs> <laughs> yes but these are easy to, to move along to new homes because they're such beautiful snakes. Yes, yes. I, there's no uh, shortage of people wanting these. Um, and unlike other people out there, um, you know, the bites aren't terribly bad, although antivenin is in short supply out of Thailand. Um, but also, you know, I'm not asking a, a fortune for the babies like other people do. Um, I just want to find the animals good homes. We're going to offer Mr. Weasel carefully because we know how Mr. Weasel can be. His eye is looking a little milky so he may be uh, going into shed but uh, that's not generally stopped him in the past. I think you may be snoozing, but <laughs> <laughs> we know how the weasel snoozes. Uh, he just makes you think that he's snoozing. All right, well, I saw the head and the pupil shift. Well, you missed. The tail is going. Come on. Come on, Mr. Weasel. You gotta work for your food. You just can't sit there and think I'm gonna bring it to you. He's wagging his tail like mad. Oh! <laughs> there he oh, is. Oh, there's the weasel! There you go, bud. I know. I made you work for it. Now, don't drop it like you did the other day. You can see his eyes get a little bit of milky and stuff. So, uh, he's like, oh, I even have to work when I'm not up to full uh, stamina here. <laughs> so, we're going to let him chow down and uh, leave him alone. As he chomps, chomp, 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 chomp. Mmm. Got to tenderize it first. Yep. Yeah. 